Hey guys, I just wanted to touch base with you. First and foremost, I want to apologize for the graininess of this video. I'm not really sure why this is recording this way, but um, we're talking about the Inside Edition video, and there's a couple other things that I want to talk about before I end it. But the first thing with Inside Edition is, uh, from a vain and sort of humorous perspective, um, I don't look like that. I don't have nine chins. I only have two, so <laughs> I don't really know what was going on with that with that recording, but I don't look like that. Second, before we go on, and I'm sure as you're watching me, you can see I have a gap in my teeth. I don't have a problem with it, so some catty little bitch on the other end of this video probably will, and you know, I invite you to have a good time. As far as what happened with Inside Edition, I feel like it was an obligatory, hey, this is a hot topic, so we're going to cover it too, type of a type of an interview. I spent a half an hour there talking all kinds of mess about LuLaRoe and what I felt needed to change and why the issues were the issues, and none of that made it into the, into the interview, so that was a little disappointing, but I wanted to just sort of recap, because I figured, well, if Inside Edition wasn't going to say it, maybe I should say it. So basically, they had asked me why I felt this was happening, and I'm not a textile expert. I'm not a manufacturer. I, I have a very strong sales background, but I I can only repeat what I've been told and what I've been told by uh, various experts in the field, uh, you know, how do you call it, manufacturing, uh, like con quality control people and uh, the actual people that, that, that make the, the product. They said that there's a chemical and mechanical process that they use to make these leggings the soft that essentially the 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 fabric is a sort of slinky stretchy material and then it goes through this this process that weakens the fibers and you know we know LuLaRoe has already admitted to that's that's the way it works so what happens though is that in weakening these fibers you sometimes get like little areas that that have uh, like like they're like degraded and putting them on, say, a sleeve where you're not sitting on it, standing up, moving, running around, it might not draw a hole. So, you know, we have these shirts and dresses that are made out of the same material that the leggings are, but they don't seem to be being returned at the, at the rate that the leggings are. So, you know, you put your, your, your butt into a pair of leggings and you go, you know, run around chasing your kids and you, you split a hole it's very easy for somebody who is defensive to say that it's because you're too fat and you're putting on these these leggings that don't fit you. I have never had that problem. Um, I'm a very happy, healthy size eight. And I want to be really clear, you know, I'm a little sensitive to the whole you're too fat thing. I've been a size four and I've been a size 22. And uh, getting to this eight was a pretty important milestone for me. I don't need some holier than thou, you know, legging worshiping bitch to tell me that I'm too fat to wear a pair of leggings. Uh, I know my size. I don't try to be anything but the size that I am. And if I am, it's because I'm working out and eating right and, and trying to shrink that size. But I don't pretend by putting on a pair of pants that are too small for me in the interim. So uh, where I do think that maybe some of the user error is is the cause for holes and leggings. I'm sure there's one person out there that was a little too big and put on a pair of pants that probably didn't fit her. I don't think that's the norm. I think it's it's a manufacturing issue and I think it probably stems from LuLaRoe's response to exponential growth uh, unexpectedly and they haven't had the time to really address the type of volume that they need and what they need to do to, you know, quality control in the interim. So uh, that was what I said. I also felt that LuLaRoe passed the buck onto their customer, which would be the consultant. I feel that because the consultant is responsible for damages and replacing these, these issues, um, these damages, they essentially are put on the defensive and they're trying to come up with creative ways to alleviate the financial stress on them you know if they're if they're shipping you know free shipping free of charge you know and they have to replace them and then they have to ship them again and then they have to replace them again and they have to ship them again these poor girls are are eating all these charges and they're not making any money and when your livelihood relies on this money well 
it's it's not their fault. The only consultant whose fault it is is the one who doesn't want to take the return, who doesn't want to help her customer, and who blasts her for being too fat. The one who passes the buck on to the customer for being too fat for a pair of stretch pants doesn't need your business. Um, and that's sort of um, the one that we call out in, in, in my blog. With that being said, I did want to segue into something else. Um, I spoke to Katie Mooney today. Actually, she just emailed me back just a little while ago. Uh, I had contacted her because of some posts in LuLaRoe Defective regarding her personal information. And I know that we've addressed this in Defective a couple times now. It seems to be, be becoming an epidemic. And I know the other admins will support me in this. We don't see everything. We don't have the ability to be in front of the computer at all times. And there are only five of us. And there are, you know, gaining on 26,000 of you. Um, I don't think that it's much to ask you to be a decent human being. I don't think that, well, first of all, I want to say that Katie's response to me was absolutely 100% well thought out, eloquent, kind. Um, we agree to disagree on the tone of her video that was posted. We agree to disagree that she didn't mean to be condescending. And we're going to move on from that. It's up. You see it. You make up your own mind. I think it was condescending. She doesn't. She's entitled. Um, you decide whether or not you want to do business with her at that level. That's on you. What you don't get to decide is to take her personal information and publish it all over the internet in LuLaRoe Defective or any other place. You don't have the right to inflict harm on someone because of a fucking pair of leggings. Uh, anybody that's doing that needs to be ashamed of themselves. I don't know how many of these we're going to have to go through before we weed out the psychopaths, but the, the woman that I caught doing it was removed and banned. The, the comments that she had posted were also removed. But, you know, after the influx of support that I've been getting from you guys, when you found out that Megan Parker was looking for me, whatever that meant, and when I got called out by the September QB Club uh, and they were talking smack about my dead son, you know, you guys were so supportive of that and that's wonderful. But you guys also have the, like, the propensity to become this psychotic lynch mob. And when Katie told me that she was getting death threats for her nine-month-old, um, I'm going to ask her to, to validate that. I want to see it. And if I find out who it was that said something to that effect... I'm going to recommend that she call the police and file a report on you. I don't, I don't ever condone that type of behavior. And you guys should be ashamed of yourself if that's what you're doing. You know, here we're trying to rectify a situation with Chelsea and her baby and, you know, show her that we're not a bunch of crazy people. And now I'm finding out that, that Katie Mooney is getting death threats and her baby is getting death threats. I am not the person who needs to be hearing about anybody's baby getting death threats. And if I find out who you are, you're in deep shit with me. Um, that is absolutely unacceptable. It will not be tolerated. I know that the other admins are not going to deal with that. Um, and I hope we do find out. I really do hope Katie tells us who you are. Um, that's just so uncalled for. It's disgusting. It's cheap. It's, it's, it's not acceptable. So don't let it happen again. That is not something we're going to tolerate in the group. Um, I won't be a part of it. I won't, I just, I won't participate in that. Look, I can call somebody out for what I think is wrong all day long. I can talk about how people talk down to each other. I can talk about the poor quality. I can talk about how LuLaRoe is a scam. We can do that all day long. But the minute you start threatening people is the minute you are done. We are done. It's, it's just, it's not something I'm going to participate in. And I just, I'm ashamed to be associated with anybody who's doing that. So, um, you know, I don't care if the woman had horns and called everybody, you know, the N-word. We don't make death threats. We, we rise above and, you know, intelligence and eloquence is what gets us through. We absolutely do not stoop to the level of bullying. You want to pick on the girl's hair. You want to make fun of her shirt. I don't, that whatever. We're big girls. We can handle that. When you reach out to her and you start threatening the lady, that's, that's just uncalled for. So I hope I never have to address that again. Um, but just not cool, guys. Just really not cool. Um, so that being said, you know, we had... 
a, a fine exchange. I mean, she was fine. Uh, she's she was mature. She could had absolutely every reason to be catty. She didn't, but I don't think that she accepts. And I, and you know, if I were her, I don't know that I would either. But I don't think that she accepts what I'm saying in my blog. And I think that because these mentors and uplines are seeing the money, I think that they are putting trust in a company that could very well be leading them down the wrong path. There are substantial legal claims. The FTC is getting involved. The uh, Tina.org, Truth in Lending, or excuse me, Truth in Advertising.org just released an article that will be, you know, I'll be blogging about soon. But the article gives evidentiary um, support to the issues with the truth in advertising that we've had with LuLaRoe. This is an agency that's that's consumer protection oriented. They're not, they they're not writing a book. You can't accuse them of of trying to you know profit financially from blowing up LuLaRoe like you know some of you did to me. You know they're not. They're not here for anything but to protect the consumer. So when they release a report that says, well, LuLaRoe lied about this, and oh, hey, you know, you're not supposed to advertise your um, bonus checks, but here's a picture of Kim Roy Lance with her million dollar check, you know, that adds a little bit more weight to our argument. So, you know, I don't think that a lot of these people are ready to hear that this is not okay. I think that they're being told that it's going to be okay and that it's fine, and they really don't know any better is what I'd like to think. I think that um, through the course of these blogs, they will learn what's happening. I'm in no way an attorney, uh, but I, I have them, you know, <laughs> and we talk about these things and the law is, you know, you can look it up online. I mean, it's black and white. It's, it can be interpreted different ways, but at the end of the day, you know, it's, there's things you can and cannot do and LuLaRoe is doing it significantly. So... Um, you know, I, I think that that needs to be addressed and addressed and addressed and addressed until somebody hears it. I also told, uh, Miss Mooney today that I don't think that LuLaRoe is beyond repair. I think that at some point they have to own the issues that they, that they have and say, you know what, you guys, we made some mistakes. Here is a new leaf and we're going to do this and we're going to do right by our consultants. A lot of consultants think I have a problem with consultants. I don't. I, I think it's a cute product. I think it's it has the potential to be amazing. But I don't support a company that completely shames their bread and butter. The, the overweight and curvy population is an extremely underserved category in fashion. And here comes this company with this marketing plan that just blows away anything else that's ever been done. And for that, it's genius. But these women are living in LuLaRoe just to take abuse from other consultants that are calling them fat and telling them that they don't belong, essentially, in a, in a product that was made for them, which is asinine and unacceptable. I think that that being said, the, the best way for LuLaRoe to proceed is to prevent their reps from, from making these type of statements, to hold them accountable. And where LuLaRoe has absolutely no problem locking somebody out of their back office for saying Deanne's wearing too much makeup, they should probably consider doing that to somebody who fat shames their clientele. So with all of that being said, there will be some, some more focus on, on the body shaming aspect. There will be more focus on the Tina.org aspect. And um, just to, you know, to remind you guys not not to bully, that it's not going to be tolerated. And then just a final thought before I sign off on this thing. Um, you know, LuLaRoe uses a word that's extremely, um, it's a powerful word. The word is empowerment. And the definition of empowerment is to give someone permission to have control, to give them the opportunity to make a decision. You do not need LuLaRoe to tell you that you're beautiful. You do not need a piece of fabric to make you feel like a woman. And you do not need Deanne to give you permission to do anything but be yourself and be comfortable with yourself. You need to give yourself permission to be happy and to feel beautiful. And if that's in LuLaRoe, that's fine. But it could also be in Kmart, Express, Neiman Marcus, whatever you choose it to be, own it and feel good about yourself. If you want to be thinner and you can, work on it. 
you don't have to have a brand to find define you you don't need to be a victim to a, a, an extremely brilliant marketing plan if you like the product buy it but don't define yourself by that product okay be you and give yourself permission to be beautiful thanks for watching guys